All prophets sent by Allah came with a special message to humanity. Warn us of an approaching day of judgment. No one can know when the day of judgment will occur. However, God has taught his messengers some of the signs that alert one to the fact that the hour is approaching. These signs play a very important role. They reinforce one's belief in the Prophet and are a reminder of the Day of Judgment. There's no doubt we are living in some strange times. These times were long foretold by our Prophet. Believe it or not, we are now right in the middle of the end times. Because our Prophet said that in the end times, the barefooted Arab Bedouins will be competing with each other in building tall structures. Twenty years ago, Dubai was just a dry desert place in the Arab Peninsula. But it is now considered as one of the most advanced cities in the world. This was predicted by our Prophet, 1400 years ago. The Burj Khalifa in Dubai is at the moment the tallest structure in the world. But it will soon have competition from neighboring Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has signed a deal for 8.4 billion Saudi riyals for the building of the Jeddah Tower. The prophecy is being fulfilled right in front of our eyes. And they're both from Bedouins. And they were unclothed. And there were Bedouin Arabs and now they're competing in tall buildings. Now this is very interesting because if you were a rationalist at that time, you would think the one who's competing in tall buildings would be the superpowers of the time, which were the Romans and the Persians. The Arabs, in many cases, used to build buildings in the ground because it was so hot. Yeah. Some of the houses were in the ground and they just had tents. The Prophet said that the hour will already have casted its shadow when we can see Mecca with its mountains pierced with holes. and its buildings reaching the mountain tops. Only a real prophet could make such clear and accurate predictions. The prophet also said that in the end times, female singers and musical instruments will become popular. With popular, it's meant that these things will be achieved on a global scale. Today we can see numerous female artists who have attained worldwide fame. This has never happened before in the history of mankind. And again we can see the words of our Prophet being fulfilled right in front of our eyes. In the end times, people will dance late into the night. Muslim men will resemble unbelieving men. Muslims will slowly, but deeply, appropriate the traditions and ways of the Christians. Believers turn into unbelievers and will sell their religion for non-essential things of this world. Women who will be dressed, yet will appear to be naked. They will seduce men and will be inclined towards them. with something on their heads that looks like the humps of camels, leaning to one side. Clothed, but unclothed. You know, some of the swimwear, if you look at, or some of the gym wear, if you look at, they, they, they like, like, who are you? It's, it's not clothing. Kasiyatun ariyat. Clothed, but naked. Or if you look a more moderate tafsir, if you like, clothing will be very tight or it will be see-through or there will be cuts and slits around the sides and so on and so forth. So that although it pretends, it doesn't show what shows. And the Prophet said, alayhi afdalu salatu wa tammu taslim, that they will not smell the fragrance of Jannah Although the smell of Jannah can come from so far, yet these people will be made forbidden for them is that smell, that fragrance of Jannah.
people will walk in the marketplace with their thighs exposed. This sign is very obvious, especially in Western countries. Keep in mind, these events are very recent. Just a hundred years ago, even in these countries, the women wore modest clothes. The Prophet said, most certainly people from my nation will consume liquor, which they will describe with some other name. This is a prediction, and a reference to the different brands of alcohol that are available today. Liquor stores are strewn throughout the city of Oman. By law, bars and liquor stores must be owned and run by Christians. No Muslims allowed. However, Muslims are perfectly free to patronize them, and they do. Our customers are both Christians and Muslims. We don't really have problems here. There will be many women of childbearing age who will no longer give birth. Women continue to delay having children, according to new data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The average age for first-time mothers increased from 24 in 2000 to 26 in 2014. The Prophet said these women will enter the workforce out of love for this world. And this is why they will delay having children. Researchers believe the trend of waiting to have children will continue as more women focus on career before starting a family and as they pursue fertility options like egg freezing. In the end times, there will be snubbing and standoffishness among people. There will be an abundance of food, much of which has no blessing in it. This is clearly a reference to fast food which has absolutely no nutritional value. Wealth will increase so much, so that if a man were given 10,000, he would not be content with it. But the wealth will be shared out only among the rich, with no benefit to the poor. The rich will get richer and richer. Today, the top 1% wealthy people have half of all the wealth in the world. Western corporations are plundering developing countries. The decoration of mosques will be a matter of pride and competition. Abundance of police squads and oppressive officials who wield whips the size of the tails of cattle. Men will begin to look like women and women will begin to look like men. And there are many signs that should be troubling to people. The Prophet predicted same-sex marriage. I mean, that's a sound hadith. He said the end of time will not come until a man marries a man and a woman marries a woman. For today, Ireland became the first country in the world to pass a constitutional referendum allowing same-sex marriage. This is the moment same-sex supporters and we have no evidence in human history that that was ever, we have no evidence that any culture has ever sanctioned same-sex marriage. But he said it will be one of the signs of the end of time. He said you will see nikah al-rajul al-rajul wa nikah al-mar'ati al mara And nikah here means clearly marriage because homosexuality existed. So he wasn't talking about homosexuality or, or, or musahaqa. He was talking about marriage. <laughs> You know, he predicted that the, the, the buildings of Mecca would surpass the mountains. Who could have thought of that in the 7th century of Arabia? Who could have thought of that? He predicted that people would go out of their houses with uh, things on their thighs that would tell them what was happening back in their families. He said that people would talk to shirakun alihi, which in Arabic shirakun al is this. That's the... That is what a shiraku na'li, which is the universal sign today for telephone. And he said a man will talk to his shiraku na'l. You know, that's how people say it, right? The, the Arabs call that shiraku na'l. The Prophet ﷺ predicted many, many things that have come true. That in the seventh, in the seventh century in Arabia, it just would not have been possible to pr predict those things or, or they wouldn't even occur to people. The Prophet said, children born outside of marriage will become commonplace.
In Colombia, more than eight out of every ten children are born to unwed mothers. But the actual percent of U.S. births to unmarried women has gone up a lot. 2002, 34% of all births. 2013, 40.6% of all births in the U.S. In 1960, 5% of children entered the world without a mother and father married to each other. By 1980, it was 18%. By 2000, it had risen to 33%. And 15 years later, the number reached 41%. The prophet said, in the end times, obesity would become prevalent. Well, the explosion of overweight and obese people in the developing world is largely down to the emerging economies, those that have, uh, have gone through a transition from being low-income economies to middle-income economies in the last generation. And that has produced a large middle class of people who have rising incomes and they can buy the foods they want and they're undertaking more sedentary lifestyles. Smog will appear over cities because of the evil that they are doing. India's second largest city, New Delhi, remains shrouded in dangerously thick smog. Problem affecting a huge swathe of northern China at the moment with a pollution cloud hanging over this country from the Russian border in the far northeast all the way down to the central cities. The prophet said, great distances will be traversed in short spans of time. And voices will be raised in mosques. Rain will be acidic or burning. Acid rain is any form of precipitation with high levels of nitric and sulfuric acids. It can occur in the form of snow, fog, and even dry materials that settle to earth. Most acid rain is caused by human activities. That there will be dishes, and they will be communicating constantly, and then people will break the ties of kingship. The word for dishes is literally a dish. And the word that's used now is the word for satellites. And they're dishes and they communicate. Academic journal that says there is a correlation between people sitting at home watching satellite TV and not having communal family ties anymore. These signs leave absolutely no doubt about the prophethood of Muhammad, may the blessings of Allah be upon him. It's impossible somebody could predict all these signs 1400 years ago, except a prophet of God. These hadith were recorded thousands of years ago, in manuscripts that have been carbon dated back thousands of years by scientists. So nobody can even claim that these signs were made up to fit current events. What these signs also prove is that there is absolutely no doubt left that we are living in the end times. All the minor signs that have been prophesied have come to pass right in front of our eyes as you saw in this video. This means we are on the brink of seeing the major signs of the end times. The real question is not when is the last hour. The question is... What have you prepared for it? يَسْأَلُكَ النَّاسُ عَنِ السَّاعَةِ قُلْ إِنَّمَا عِلْمُهَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّ السَّاعَةَ تَكُونُ قَرِيبًا One of the first major signs that will plunge our world into dark times is a war so great which humanity has not witnessed before. The next event that is about to occur is the Great War. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, and he said when Jerusalem is center stage and flourishing, built up, which is where we are now, then look for the Malhama. The Malhama is a Great War. The Malhama is not just a Great War. 
it's a war like no war has ever been. That 99 out of every 100 of the combatants will die, will be killed. The only way that 99 out of every 1,000 can be killed is if it's a war with weapons of mass destruction. NATO is preparing for war with Russia. This war has been planned long before by the evil forces that rule the world today. These same evil people caused World War I and World War II. We can prove this claim by a letter that was written by an American general, Albert Pike. A 33-degree Mason and a top leader of the Ku Klux Klan, Pike was also believed to be a Luciferian. He claimed he was able to summon Lucifer at will as the Grand Master of the Order of the Palladium. In 1871, Pike allegedly sent a letter to an Italian political activist named Giuseppe Mazzini in which he describes a curious dream about three world wars. In this letter, Pike apparently outlines specific events leading up to World Wars I and II. Additionally, Pike pushed for the organization of communism, Nazism, Zionism, and other international movements as tools to escalate these conflicts. According to this letter, the Illuminati will provoke a third world war by creating religious conflicts in the Middle East. After this war is ended, the letter claims that nihilist and atheist will create bloody turmoil, leading the world's disillusioned masses to follow Lucifer. Today we can see clear preparations being made for this war. The Georgia Guidestones is a granite monument erected in the United States. This monument has ten commandments for the world. But to this day, nobody knows the author of these commandments. One of the commandments is to maintain humanity under 500 million. This proves that the satanic powers are behind this, and to achieve this they will cause a world war and they will surely succeed in achieving this. Because remember that our prophet said that 99% of the people fighting will die in this war. But why do they want this war? After this war, the world will see the advent of the false messiah, the Antichrist, the Dachal. In order for the Dachal to arrive, they have to prepare Israel to make his arrival possible. That there is a fella a mastermind at work who wants to rule the whole world. He is the one who says a man could marry another man and get a marriage certificate. You know who the fella is. And eventually a man will stand up in Jerusalem and declare, I am al Masih, the Messiah. But he would not be al Masih, the Messiah. He would be Dajjal, the false messiah. In order for him to achieve his objective, for Israel to rule the world, he has to make Israel very, very big, like the United States. But that's not possible. Israel cannot expand. Israel is surrounded by the Arabs. Forget it. Or the world has to become much smaller. Which one will it be? Which one will it be? Yes, the answer is the world will have to become much smaller. Hmm? And that's why we're going to have nuclear war. The main goal of World War I was to dismantle the Islamic State and establish a Jewish holy land in Palestine. 1914, talk begins in the British cabinet at the highest levels of promising a Jewish homeland to the Zionists. The Zionists were a movement, a group of influential, powerful Jews in Europe, and the goal... World War III will be caused to reduce the world population. This will make it easier for them to rule the world. This is their new world order, with the Dajjal as their ruler. As they say to the world, we must come back to religious values. This is Bax Judaica. But their oppression will be greatest of all because they want to rule over everybody. So you must be thinking, why do they need Israel to make the arrival of the Antichrist possible? The Satanists want to build their third temple in Jerusalem. 
They need this temple for a global satanic ritual, which will allow the Antichrist to emerge. The Antichrist is just a human like us. He is one of the descendants of Prophet David. This global satanic ritual will give him superhuman powers, because he will have control over all the jinn. Just like Prophet Solomon had authority over all the jinn. Allah says we gave him control over all the jinn kind. Those that could build so quickly, magnificent buildings, and those that could dive into the oceans and extract from it anything he wanted and he asked for. Sulaiman alayhi salam. And he had also the authority to tie up these jinn in such a way that they would be slave for him doing whatever he wants, all tied up in a line in a uniform fashion. So he had them in his army and he had the wind in his army and he was a king at the same time and a warrior. They came down with magic, two angels, Harut and Marut, where in a place called Babil or Babylon. And the, the reason they had to teach a few people what it was all about was so that they could distinguish between the miracle of a Nabi and the magic of magicians. When they were taught, they knew very well that this is magic and what Sulaiman alayhi salam has come with is the miracle of a Nabi. They knew that what they are purchasing, the deal that they are making will render them in such a condition in the Akhirah that they won't have any portion left for them in the Akhirah. If you take a look at Babylon up to this day, it is the headquarters of magic. There are people, whether they belong to the Illuminati or whether they belong to the Freemasons, part of the same thing, who worship the devil completely. And the devil tells them, we will give you two things, power and kingdom together with everlasting life. The seat of magic is in one of two places. You find it in Egypt where the pyramids are because there was a lot of magic at the time of Pharaoh. The temple of Solomon is spoken about. May Allah's peace be upon Sulaiman. His intention was brilliant. He in fact abandoned everything, but he had all the books under his throne. They were there. Sulaiman alayhi salam built a temple. It is reported that that tabut, the Ark of the Covenant was also kept there to this day. And they are saying we were looking for the Ark of the Covenant. And in the process, they are destroying the masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the haram. They will place this Ark of Covenant in the third temple, which will give the Dachal his powers. When Musa alayhi salam was passing away, he gave a certain little box known as a tabut. It was a box, the Ark of the Covenant. In it were some of the fragments of the tablets upon which the Ten Commandments were written and a few items inside there. We don't know exactly what there is dispute as to what it was, but for sure it was a reassurance and a comfort to the people who had it. And when they opened it, they felt very secure. They felt very calm. And every time they fought, they took that ark with them. And when they fought, they won the battle. Whenever the ark was with them, in it, it had the tablets that were given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Musa alayhi salam. They will use this divine knowledge for evil. Their third temple will be built at the same location as the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Preparations have already begun for the building of the temple. In Jerusalem, King David established our capital 3,000 years ago. In Jerusalem, King Solomon built our temple, which stood for many centuries. In Jerusalem, Jewish exiles from Babylon rebuilt the temple, which stood for many more centuries. We are in Jerusalem and we are here to stay. And today, the United States of America is opening its embassy right here in Jerusalem. Thank you. Thank you, President Trump, for having the courage to keep your promises. President Trump, and thank you all for making the alliance between America and Israel stronger than ever. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tattakhidhu al-yahuda wa al-nasara awliya ba'aduhum awliya ba'adu wa man yatawallahum minkum fa'innahu minhum to advance the truth, the true 
The truth and peace are interconnected. A peace that is built on lies will crash on the rocks of Middle Eastern realities. You can only build peace on truth. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْعُونَ Those of you who are watching Bible prophecy and the plans to rebuild the temple, I have now in my hand a piece of modern prophetic history, if you will. It is one of 1,000 silver-plated temple half-shekel coins minted in Israel in recognition of Donald Trump's declaration of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. They are to be used in the third temple. On the front is Donald Trump with King Cyrus the Great, who two and a half thousand years ago saw to it that the Jews would rebuild their ancient temple. Friends, this is prophecy coming true in my hands. What incredible days we live in. America's ambassador to Israel has come in for criticism after he was seen posing with a rather controversial gift. David Friedman was presented with a photograph of one of the most sacred places in Jerusalem but the image had been altered to show the Jewish Third Temple on the site where the Islamic Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock are currently situated. The Third Temple is a biblical reference to a new place of worship to replace an ancient one which was destroyed. It is the holiest place that we have right now. The Third Temple is going to come right here. Okay. Okay. So, this, so without a so doubt, you believe there is There's no doubt. There's no doubt. Oh, it's going to be very... Very, very interesting, eh? Tomorrow? وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد